understand its sin. for others 
to do the call of God. And so it's really that simple, right? Yeah. It just seems simple, but it's really not. It's, really not it's a really sacrifice, hard. but it's a sacrifice of love. Come on up. Yay. You can introduce your family. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, each of you today. The, uh, my wonderful family, my husband Todd, and my son Jonathan. Hi guys. Um, Shabbat Shalom family. Shabbat Shalom. It's beautiful to be here on such a great day, right? Today is a day, a holy day. We go into Passover. And so um, it's beautiful to see what he's doing in us, right? And uh, I just love that as he works in us, he's working through us, right? He's working through us. And when we allow him to work through us, then what we're able to do is touch others, right? With his testimony, right? It's our lives he's using, but it's his testimony in our lives, right? So um, I'm just very thankful that Stephanie um, let me come. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's like, can you talk about Esther? And I'm like, oh. Yes, <laughs> but what else can I say? <laughs> so let me start. Um, I did not grow up in a household that knew um, Jesus. I found him when I was 20. I had been married two years at that time. And he brought me to a new place. And where he says he created in us, he made us a new creation. Um, he did. He made me something different. <laughs> Uh, however, what happens is, at least with me, he keeps making me a new creation, right? He keeps working in me, and I'm very thankful for that area, right, that he allows us. So, um, but when I first received him, we were already married, and, and everyone kept saying this word, like, God will use you. And I'm like, oh yeah, I don't know. I am. I'm thinking you don't know me, <laughs> right? And um, so they kept saying, well, yeah, he's going to use you. He's going to give you your heart's desire. I was like, hmm, now then, I don't know, because he's changing my heart, right? He's changing who I am, and he's making me a new creation, and so he's going to give me my heart's desire. So it took me a while, and I was like, well, if I could have anything I wanted that I could do with my life, I would be a missionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then my husband, he's like, mm, I don't think we're going out of the country, Karen. And I'm pretty sure he didn't call me to be a missionary, and we're already married, and we're going to stay, so... Well, right, right? So, yeah. But it was always just in my heart, like, do more, do more. Like, it's his kingdom, right? Yes. And we want to share him with others. And we want to share his love. Because that is the main thing he revealed to me in the beginning. He loves me. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Like, he loves me. And he knows me every single tiny itsy bitsy place of who I am he knows you know so that secret that I've been keeping he knew it already right so it was like okay God like you know me you can use me and I went through life and I'm learning more about him and learning more about him and I got it. I was praying about a job because I was raising children, and it's like, okay, what do I do? Okay, God, it's time. Now it's time. You've got a job for me to do. Where am I going to go? And one day I got up, and it it had been narrowed down to two places. One was a school. One was a child care. And I got up that morning, and I just knew it was time. I don't know. Have you ever been there? Like, you just wake up, and it's like, yep, yeah, today's the day. Today I'm going on a new adventure. Not unlike each of you that are in this room right now. Because today, you're here for a reason. It isn't 
by chance that he brought you here. It isn't because your friend just invited you here. It's because he's called you to be here for a reason. So he called me to go to the school. I'm like, yeah. And I get to the school and I'm pretty certain they're going to hire me because God told me to go there and I want to be in the classroom. Yeah, I can do it. And I get to the school and I apply and guess what? They don't hire me to be in the classroom. They hire me to be in the front office doing administration with a beautiful woman named Marcy Swain. And I'm like, well, listen, I am not an administrative type. I want to be with those kids. I really do not enjoy adults. <laughs> no adults allowed, okay? But, okay, this is where I know you told me to go here. I know you told me, so, okay. Well, to make a long story short, Marcy and I worked together all summer in the office, and I learned so much about myself. And then God released me into a classroom. However, Marcy became my friend. Marcy became my sister. And that's how Esther, I became attached to Esther Single Mothers Outreach. Marcy is our director. She started Esther out of her church that she was going to in Church in the Sun in Orlando. And God opened the doors for us to become our own nonprofit. And our building that we're still in has been donated. So she stepped out of the school. Right before she stepped out of the school to do full-time ministry, God led me to step out of the school to homeschool my daughter. And I was there for like four months and thought, ugh, I cannot be here all day. This child will not make it. So I can go volunteer with Marcy for a few hours, right? And she'll survive. I'll be okay. And we're going to make it through this phase of life together. And that began the journey there. But the beautiful thing about it is the Lord showed me that I am a missionary. I am a missionary to single moms to women who have been beaten down, who have been said they can't over and over again, who have been told, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have, right? What did you do? Maybe you've heard that not as a single mom, right? As not as, but it's what did you do? You've done something to be in that position. And God has allowed me to be where I'm at, to be able to help tell them they're in that position for a reason, that he's equipped and prepared them for such a time as this, that he didn't give them children for no reason, right? That they are the best parent for that child and that they can. But here's the, like, the thing. They can't do it without him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are a nonprofit that operates solely by faith. Um, our donations come in by individuals, corporations. We do not seek funding from anyone. We ask him. Marcy, our director, likes to say that we prepare the table. We prepare the table. And when the table's set, it comes. So we help single moms with food, clothing. Um, they come for appointments. They get five outfits per child for, per, for the mom, two pair of shoes, um, purses, new undies, things like that, non-perishable foods. But the most important thing they get before they leave where they're at is they get an opportunity to lay it down at the cross the release and let Jesus to give him an opening to come in where no one's no one's been before right 
and know that he can do it for them. He can do it. He is the answer to everything. Yes. And so Esther stands for encourage, strengthen, teach, help, equip, restore. How do you do that? It's very simple. We offer them the earthly things, right? What the world says is right and good and true, right? Clothing. We want them to look good. We only keep the best of what we receive. I'm not going to give them something that I should have thrown away. There's no way, right? Would, would our father give that to you as his child? No, he would not. No, he would not. But oftentimes what happens is, is that we receive a counterfeit, right? We, we settle. We settle for less. And so we are teaching these beautiful, courageous single moms that they don't need to settle for less. That he is offered more. That the kingdom principles that his word teaches, because let's face it, his word is alive and well and living in us and working through us, right? It's living. So his word, when we speak out his word, when we read his word, it, it's not that it just falls. No. It's going to produce life. We have a choice to make. We have a choice to make what life will we choose. So it's just like today when you came, right? When you came today, you chose to be here. And you may have even thought, you know, I don't know why I'm here. I have zero reason why I've come, but I want to support my friend. Or, you know, well, maybe, maybe I hear there's somebody and maybe I'll give a word, right? But you're not here just for a word, right? You're here for him. Yeah, you're here for his kingdom. You're here to learn what he has for you. That you're not, he does not desire you to be stuck where you're at. And you know what his word says? His word says that we go from glory to glory to glory. And he says, Ladies who are over 50, like me, right? Or maybe over 60, I'm getting closer to that end, right? It doesn't say he's done with you when you reach a certain age, right? It says that our latter days shall be better than our former days. So ladies, as you learn, just like you just got taught some beautiful, beautiful nuggets of love from the Father yes. through this beautiful teacher, and it will continue. As you learn about receiving more of what he has for you and, and the things that he wants you to see within his kingdom, as you learn those things and take hold of them, then he can begin to make in you a new thing. Just like he showed me that I am a missionary. For him. It's like, what? I just, I, it's kind of like the love thing for me. It's the same thing. When I think that he loves me, I, I start to giggle. Because it's like, dude, he really loves me. I, it just, I, and, I, and it, listen, you know what's really funny? It has zero to do with how good we are. Right, right? The zero. Like, it, it's like, well, Karen, if you perform well enough today, I'm going to love you. If you don't eat that cookie today, I'm going to love you. Right? If your hair looks just right today, I'm going to love you. Right? He doesn't say that. He says he loves us. And there's unconditional love, and he doesn't put the love, his love, is a conditional on what you do. His love is because of what he did for us. It's because of who he is, because he first loved us, right, that we're able to love him. So just be encouraged, women of God. As Esther and as he's placed me where he at has allowed me to minister to single moms and their children, um, because let's face it, I I love the moms, but let me just tell you a secret, I do it for the kids. 
This is me. I'm serious. Can you just hold this? Ladies. <laughs> That's the position I take at my desk before I answer the phone. <laughs> like, oh, it's a mom. Okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. Give me what I need to say. Don't let me be Karen. Because... <laughs> wrong place to be but when we submit to the Holy Spirit it is I like it it's the only place to be and it's not hard the world makes it hard it makes it seem like you have to be spiritual to get there you don't have to be spiritual you have to be his child you have to study his word and you have to be a receiver of what he has for you so beautiful women of God Today is a great day. Today is a new day. Today is a day that he is creating in you a new thing. He is building your tapestry. He is building your testimony. He is not done with you yet. And you may have walked in this building feeling as though you were defeated. Feeling as though you were down. But let me just tell you. He is lifting you up. And all he says is just this one precious thing. He says, daughter, look at me. And he opens his arms wide, very wide. And he receives you as you are. So be ready. Because as the day progresses, he's going to reveal more of who he is in you working through you, able to change not just your life, but generations to come. Generations to come. Thank you. Love you, ladies. she can run it. Um, I am going to have Kim come up first, though. Just you guys go ahead and get ready. And Kim, are you ready? Kim is, my, is our dear friend. She is a member and a board member woo-hoo, of Shiloh Ministries. And I have uh, known Kim now for about, what, three years? And I have to say that Kim has grown so much in three years. When I met her, she was a crying mess, to be honest. Sometimes I still do. No, but I mean, you were riddled with fear, terror. It was so strong, it was crippling her as a woman. But this woman that you're seeing today, this woman is not that woman. God has changed her. God has changed her, and she is now a budding prophet God is showing her. She has dreams and visions and words of the Lord. And she has just stepped into a, a realm that she did not know before. Thank you. Hey, nice Shabbat to meet you. God bless. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. <laughs> Kim Kutcher. All right, this is about as transparent as you can be because I'm not a speaker. This is the first time. Yeah, you're not a speaker yet. <laughs> this is the first time I've gotten to speaking up for a group of people and shared a very intimate part of my life. Peace upon you, Mom. 
Um, how many people in this room Maybe have? Your girls. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to get there, oh, but that's okay. It's <laughs> okay. I'll do it first. I appreciate two of my daughters being here to support me today, Amber and Tara. I have the Lord bless you with five children, and, and two of them are here today. Um, how many in this room have done something in their life that they regretted and had shame and guilt over? Yeah. Up in the right place. Okay. <laughs> Our minds are a battlefield. The enemy loves to feed us lies and self-condemnation and guilt. Unforgiveness opens you up to letting the enemy do just that. My story involves abortion. Abortion has two victims. There's a death and there's the damaged. Moral guilt. And for 40 years, I struggled with that guilt. You see, I was 17 years old. I was engaged to be married and I got pregnant. I was excited about the pregnancy and so was my fiance. Well, we shared it with our parents and they weren't so excited. <laughs> so, my parents made an appointment in Pensacola. We had to drive a couple of hours to the abortion clinic. And I was to have an abortion. You see, maybe it would have been a little easier if I wasn't a Christian. But I had been walking with the Lord since junior high. And I knew right from wrong. And the condemnation and guilt that comes with that was unbearable. On the way to the clinic, I prayed about the whole way and I wrote in a journal a letter to my baby asking forgiveness. At the clinic, I still didn't want the abortion, but I let my parents down. And at that time, the fiance had been told that he wanted to go to college and that would affect the future. So I made the decision and I went through the abortion. It caused um, a lot of pain in the relationship I had with my husband after that. I carried unforgiveness for many years. I didn't really realize that's what I had done, but that's what I did. I, I grew farther from God after that. And then there came a point in my life when I realized what I really needed was forgiveness. I needed to forgive. My parents, nor the father of the baby, asked me for forgiveness. But in my heart, I knew it was causing a problem with my God. So I forgave them. I had a lot of bitterness in my heart. And not forgiving can cause you mental disease. It can cause you physical disease. And I went through the bouts of suicide and all the wonderful things that come with that unforgiveness. I became a victim in my mind. And then I finally realized that it was my choice to be a victim. I wasn't taking responsibility for my decision. It was still my decision ultimately. I did not have the courage to save that child. But you know what? God loves me. Yes, he does. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he forgave me. Yes. But I still wasn't right. The devil could still feed me all this information, cause guilt, cause shame throughout my life. And I believed a lie about myself. I didn't think I was worthy of God's love for what I had done, because I was a murderer. And then God reminded me that Paul was a murderer. Mm -hmm. And Elijah. 
And look, look what he did. Yeah. Look what he did with his life. And he used him for his purpose. He was forgiven. My problem was I just wanted to keep punishing myself. And I had never forgiven myself. I forgave other people that I blamed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I had never forgiven myself. Mm -hmm. So I finally did, after 40 years of torture, <laughs> finally forgave myself. Praise and that's, God. Uh, Praise that um, happened with Allison's group. It was a big part of it. I learned how to forgive myself. See, God doesn't want us going through our life punishing ourselves or abortion or anything else that we've done wrong. Jesus was surrounded by those who rejected but found compassion, forgiveness, and hope in his love. I have a, a couple of verses here um, that help me get strength. You see, forgiveness is really the key. And it took me a long time to find that out. In Proverbs 28, 13, one who covers up his transgressions will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them finds mercy. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and purify us from all that unrighteousness. See, we don't deserve his forgiveness, that's true. But Christ took on what we deserved so we could get what we don't deserve. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Lord. That's his grace. Yes. He gave us forgiveness and a clean start. In Matthew yeah. 6, 14, 15, For if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your sons. That's right. In Philippians 3.13, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself as having taken hold of this, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind yes. and straining toward to what's ahead. Because we're forgiven, we don't dwell in our past sins. Right. Yeah. And God is good. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Psalms 32, 5. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not hide my iniquity. I said, I confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Forgiveness is powerful. This frees us from the bondage of guilt, shame, and resentment. Don't be a victim of unforgiveness. Be a victor. Yes, that's right. We yes. can move forward and be the light in the darkness and fulfill the calling that God has made for us. Yes. I want to be like Esther. I want to find the favor of my king. Yes. And I want to be like Deborah. I want wisdom and discernment for my life. And that's what he wants for all of us. He wants to make our life righteous. Thank you. Mom, I just want to tell you in front of these ladies that I guess it was a couple months ago I, and I didn't realize, you know, how much you were still struggling with all this, but I had had dreams and I had had these spiritual impressions about that baby and how that baby is with God and how that child is in heaven and just this real deep knowingness about it and I guess that was for you and I just want you to know that I received that message and you know uh, you're an amazing mother and we love you and we just absolutely we're not perfect we've done a lot of things we hope you'll forgive us and we absolutely forgive you awesome. and and I just love you so much thank you so much for sharing your story with us <laughs> Restoration is a beautiful thing. Yes. Can you tell kids the heart of our group? Yeah, she's got a good heart. We love you. You're going to keep us grounded in the Father's heart. 
Okay, we're ready. <laughs> ready for more tears? We're ready. Yeah, okay, now, Sammy is a spitfire. Okay, Woo! warning you now. Uh, and